Hello everyone, mesh painting is a great way to add variation to instances of the same mesh in the level. I've made a master material with support for both vertex and texture painting, height blending, puddles, and much more. In this video, I'll go over its features that help us make better assets and environments. So let's do it. Paint anywhere. Depending on our need, we can use either vertex painting or texture painting. If we look at the material, we can see that we have this option. If it's true, it uses texture color and if it's false, it uses vertex color. In this material, it's true, so the material uses texture color. But in this material, it's false and it uses vertex color. Vertex painting is supported in all Unreal Engine 5 versions. In Unreal Engine 5.5 and above, the material supports both vertex and texture painting. This lets us work flexibly across different projects and engine versions. Notice that the materials blend based on height data. Unlike vertex painting, we can use texture painting to paint directly on nanite meshes in the level. Look Dev and Blending In Unreal Engine 5.4 and above, the material is fully set up for nanite tessellation and displacement. And we can control it with these parameters for each material, or we can control it for the whole material by going to Material Property Overrides, and change the magnitude. We can have up to 4 materials or 3 materials and puddle. Under global, just enable or disable the puddle option to toggle between them. So in this material, the puddle option is turned off, so we have 4 materials. But if I enable puddle, you can see that now we have 3 materials and puddle. The different materials can be blended using mesh painting and height data. Earlier we saw how we can use mesh painting to blend the materials, but if we go under each material parameters, we have these height texture multiplier and contrast parameters to control how they blend. For example, if I increase it for the base material, which is the cobblestone material, we can see that this is what happens. And now if I go to material 3, which is snow, and change the height texture multiplier for this one you can see that now we have more stone so we're using both the mesh painting data and the height data to blend them enable the blue channel to paint some puddle over here we can see that the puddle also uses height data to realistically blend with the other materials and we can control the height with these parameters. We also have these other parameters to create different looks and add dynamic ripples. We can use custom masks like logos to layer in detail exactly where we want it. And as you can see, it blends in based on height data. Now we can increase the multiplier to control how much snow we have. So if I set it to 1, we have no snow, 2, 3, four five six there are a lot of parameters to control how each material looks and feels the custom height texture option and the weathering option can help us break tiling repetitions for example let's enable the weathering and here's the result now I have changed the settings as you can see. So here's with weathering and here's the material without weathering. And here's how the custom height texture works. So for example right now it's at 0.7. If I set it to 0 this is how it looks. And if I set it to 0.7 or 0.5 this is how it looks. Now we can set the size of the custom height or we can offset it so again this is without and with but I usually set it to amounts such as 0 
texturing and UV control. The material supports both ORDP and ORM textures. We just have to enable or disable this option to control which one we're using. So for example now it's enabled I have ORM texture and if I disable it now I have ORDP and the metallic texture. And we have these options also to control whether we have a specular or subsurface texture. These parameters can help us quickly adjust the scaling and offset for each material. And if the object is not unwrapped, we can always use the triplanar projection option. So for example, this statue is not unwrapped. It looks really bad. But now if I enable the triplanar projection option and wait a little bit, we can see that it is properly textured. Now under global, we can have either local or world space triplanar. For performance, we can switch between cheap or expensive triplanar. Cheap triplanar uses fewer texture samples, which affects shader complexity. Other features. The parameters in the material instance are grouped and organized in a way that is easy to work with. There is an example level and a couple of material instances provided with the project to get you started. If you have any questions or issues when using the asset, you can message me on Telegram or Discord and I will help you. No matter what project you are working on, this material will save you a lot of time. Grab the material from the link below and start creating with it. Use this code to get 20% off at checkout. It's only available for the first 30 purchases. I'm making a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use this material. I'll put it up here as soon as I upload it. So click here for more Unreal stuff and thank you so much for watching. Massive shout out to my amazing patrons and channel members for making this possible. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So see you in the next one.